Good morning, folks. We'll begin with the latest from the European Southern Observatory. Their most recent release takes a look near the Hydra constellation, sees a nearly perfect ring. They say it's the remnants of outer stellar layers that got blown off. I wonder if nearby planets had a Noah-like starwater event when that happened. Link to the article and video is found below. If you missed our upload last night, please go back and check it out. Huge update to the solar weather connection. Scientists have long wondered where the clouds get all their juice for lightning discharges, and it appears the answer is space, exactly as predicted. Gotta go see last night's update. Now we're at the RSOE alert map in the U.S. and Canada as three events in the last day have popped onto the chart. A missing article up north, a manual shutdown, and a scramble to determine causes of an auto stop. This is also where the unusual shaking is taking place. We have more above average Oklahoma tremors, and the Caribbean ticked above average as well. We also saw the Southern Pacific near the Antarctic Ridge take one. We'll come back to seismicity, especially with multiple buoys in event mode, likely having nothing to do with surface variation. These look like the minor seafloor jolts we've seen in the past. We'll quickly run through the weather here. A low in Canada is reaching southward, converging air masses. They crash together, convect, swirl, and equalize their differing pressures, temperatures, moistures, and apparently bring in cosmic ray energy to help spark the storms. In Europe, what can I say, it's been a lighter scenario for most as spring creeps closer in. Let's enjoy it there. Because it's a whole nother story in the West Pacific. Tropical depression is still heading for the Philippines, slightly weaker, and in fact with only a few moderate CMEs with almost none on the Earth side of the disk but with some with full halo ejecta, We've seen a weakening of all but Eta, which is now a Category 3 storm, gusts into the triple digits. You can see how much moisture is pulled into the system, and this is not the surface or the 1000 pressure level. We're up into the clouds at the 700 level here, and this system is so well formed she's visible even up into the 500 layer, just below the jet stream. It's unusual to see the pattern maintained this high up through the atmosphere. Let's start space weather with the best of news. Yesterday we said the coronal fields were waving to try to block the coronal holes, our earthquake factor, and block they did in addition to a marked weakening of the IMF and solar wind power emanating from them. That's a very good thing quake-wise. Now let's look at the solar polar fields where I'll mention again the solar pole reversal is not yet complete. The northern field must be positive this coming cycle and while the south is due to be negative, it's indeed going the wrong way. I repeat, the solar pole reversal is now underway almost two years and is definitively not complete. The solar wind is calming, especially the speed in yellow there in the middle. The sunspot situation looks bleak, but with a pretty good outlook. Let's check those incoming umbral cores. We're about a half a day from proper magnetic classification of the northern group. And we're now seeing the start of the equatorial grouping coming in below. We'll also have some pop-happy regions incoming behind the limb. We can't see them yet. My eyes are on the coronal hole power as they still are Earth-facing today. Mars opposition plays for a bit longer as well. The most relevant solar feature of the last day likely did not produce significant ejecta, but that central filament that destabilized and slid back into the sun shows just how easily it could have gone the other way and released into space. Flaring should return just a bit today, and those filaments do present eruptive concern. Shots of our star to close, eyes open, no fear, it's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.